Okay, today's video is the first in a series of videos that I'm going to make about pendulums and simple harmonic motion. In today's video, we're going to be looking at qualitative look at what are the factors that affect the period of a pendulum. Before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Step by Step Science. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should subscribe, click the notifications bell, leave me a comment what you think about the video, give me a thumbs up, and share this video with all of your friends. Thank you very much for your support. We're going to be using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations. There's their website. There's their logo. Check it out. They have excellent simulations for math and sciences. And we're going to be talking about the factors that affect the period of a pendulum. This is the pendulum. The pendulum has a mass. We call that pendulum mass the bob. All the mass is focused right there at the center of the bob. This is the string. It's a light, massless string, so it doesn't affect the mass of the bob. And it swings back and forth from this point, hopefully with no or very little simula simulation, very little friction. So when we pull it back, and then we release it, it swings through the equilibrium position out to its other maximum, back through the equilibrium position, and back to its original place. Okay, we have some special terms you should be aware of. One is the period, capital T for the period. It's the time it takes for the pendulum to complete one cycle. Then what is a cycle? A cycle is when the pendulum swings out and back to its original position. So when it swings out and back, that's one cycle. The time it takes to swing out and back, that is one period. The frequency is the number of cycles per second, and the displacement or the amplitude is the amount that the pendulum is pulled back from the equilibrium position to the right is generally positive and to the left is negative. Now remember, you see pendulums all over the place. If you've ever swinged on a swing, then you've been on a pendulum. If you've ever seen a metronome that keeps time for music, that's a pendulum. You see them at amusement rides, and pendulums were used for the first grandfather clocks, which were invented by Christian Huygens in 1658 and used as the primary timekeeping device until 1930s when quartz clocks were invented. That's more than 250 years. Okay, now here's a pendulum. We're going to look at the factors that affect the period of the pendulum. Well, what could those factors be? What are some of the variables for a pendulum? Well, of course, we have the mass. And then we have the length, and then we have the acceleration of gravity, depending on where the pendulum is. On Earth, the acceleration due to gravity, of course, is 9.81. If you take your pendulum to the moon, it's only 1.62, I believe. That's one-sixth of Earth. How is that going to affect the time it takes for the pendulum to swing out and black and black out and back? And then there is the displacement. That is how far we pull back the pendulum, like that. Now, we're going to look at each of these factors uh, using this excellent simulation from PATT simulation, we're going to start with the mass. You'll notice that these two pendulums, number two and number one, they have the same length, but they have different masses. Number two, excuse me, number one has a mass of one kilograms, and number two has a mass of 0.5 kilograms. So we're going to take them both back 30 degrees. We're going to take them both back 30 degrees, and we're going to release them. And you can see that they're both meeting at the equilibrium position, they both have their maximums at the same time, and that tells us that you can see from that that the mass does not affect the period. Now we have our handy period timer here. We can check for number one, it's 1.8255. For number two, it's going to be going to be going to be 1.8255. The mass does not affect the period, even if we put this to the maximum and this one to the minimum or vice versa, and we pull them both back the same, you pull them both back the same 30 degrees, and you'll notice if you release them, they swing with the same time, they swing with the same period. We can go back to our presentation, and we can say that the mass has no effect on the period. So that is the mass. Now we're going to look at the length. So we're going to go back to our simulation, now we're going to stop this, we're going to pause this, I'm going to make them both have the same math, mass, we'll put that at like 0.5 and 0.5, but of course we're looking at the length this time, so we'll leave this one at 0.8 and we'll change number 2 to just make it like 0.5 like that. Now we can pull them both back to the same place again, the same displacement, and we can release them, and you'll notice 
Now they're kind of swinging separately. They're not meeting at the equilibrium position. They're not reaching their maximum displacement at the same time. And that means that the length does affect the period. Well, let's check number one. What is number one's period? That is 1.8255. Well, what is number two's period? That is 1.4432. That means that the number two has a shorter period. Number one has a longer period. Number two has a shorter length. Number one has a longer length. That means that the length and the period are directly proportional to each other. When you decrease the length, you decrease the period. When you increase the length, you increase the period. So we can enter that into our simulation by saying that the length is directly proportional to the period or the period is directly proportional to the length. That means when we increase the length, we increase the period. And when we decrease the length, we decrease the period. Those two things move in the same direction. The length and the period increase or the length and the period decrease. And that means that they are directly proportional to each other. So that is the mass and the length, and now we can go on and check the acceleration of gravity. Okay, so now we're going to go on and we're going to check how the acceleration due to gravity or the acceleration of gravity affects the period. We're going to go back to our simulation. Now in this case, we are only going to need one of the pendulum, so I'm going to switch it to one. I have one pendulum. I have the gravity set at Earth 9.81, and I have a pendulum that has this length and this math. Now I am going to make this go to a nice round number like 10. And we're going to check the period when we increase the, when we have it at 10, and then when we decrease and when we increase the gravity. So now we're going to pull it back to 30 degrees, and we're going to release it, and we can see that the period of the pendulum is 1.8081. Now we're going to stop that, we're going to pause that, and we're going to change the acceleration due to gravity to 5. I'm going to make a half. Okay, and then I'm going to pull it back again to 30. And that means that then I'm going to release this. And I'm going to check. And you'll notice it's swinging more slowly. Okay, because we have less gravitational traction. Check the period. And you'll notice the period actually goes up significantly to 2.5570. Now we're going to stop this. And we're going to stop this. And we're going to make the go through 10 and make this at 15. So we started at 10, we went to 5, and now we have 15. And we're going to increase this, not increase that, but put that back to 30. We're going to run it, and we can see it's swinging more quickly. And you will notice, therefore, that the period in this case is 1.4763. Now that showed us that when we decreased the gravitational attraction, we increased the period. When we increase the gravitation, then we decrease the period. That means that the period and the gravity are inversely proportional. They moved in separate directions. So we're going to go back to our simulation, back to our simulation, back to our presentation, and we are going to put down here that acceleration due to gravity is inversely proportional to the period. The period and the acceleration of gravity are inversely proportional. That means that when we increased the gravity, we decrease the period. The pendulum moved more quickly. When we decrease gravity, it took longer. The period went up. That tells us that gravity and the period are inversely proportional to each other. Okay, that's the mass, the length, the acceleration, and now we can go on and check the displacement. Okay, now, for the displacement, this is what I'm going to do. We're not going to go back to the simulation. But what I'm going to tell you is that the displacement has no effect on the period of the pendulum. Okay, now you'll notice when I said that, I put this in quotes because as long as we don't change the angle between the equilibrium position and the release position, the displacement, as long as we don't change it a lot, there is really no effect on the period of the pendulum. So for example, if we change the angle by 5 degrees, the change in the period is only 0.1%, very small amount. If we change it 10 degrees, then it's really only half a percent. And even if we change the displacement, the amount that we pull back the pendulum by 30 degrees, 
then the change in the period is only 4.7%. And we do not consider that to be a significant change. So we say for small changes in the angle that there is no effect on the period of the pendulum. And that is what we're going to be considering in this video. And in most cases, you'll consider displacement to not affect the period of the pendulum because we consider that there's no significant difference for small angle differences. Okay, so this is what we're going to say now. We're going to summarize. We're going to say that the length does affect the period and that those things are directly proportional. Increase the length, increase the period. Decrease the length, decrease the period. And the acceleration due to gravity also affects the period, and that's inversely proportional. Increase gravity, decrease period. Decrease gravity, increase period. Now we can summarize those two things because those are the only two things that affect the period of the pendulum. We can write that like this. The period is directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to gravity. And if you look at the actual equation that is used to calculate the period of the pendulum, you will see that it is 2 pi times the square root of L over G. And that shows us that it's directly proportional to the length and inversely proportional to gravity. This is on the top of the fraction, directly proportional. This is on the bottom of the fraction, inversely proportional. So this is the equation that we use to calculate the period of the pendulum. And now we're going to do one simple example right here. We're going to say, what is the period of a simple pendulum that has a length of 0.75, not 0.75, but 75 centimeters? Now I said 0.75 because you got to change the centimeters into meters. Okay, for all of these distances, we have to use the standard metric units, which is the meters and meters per second. Okay, so the period is t is equal to 2 times pi times the square root of the length, 0 0.75 meters, times gravity. doesn't say here, so we'll assume we're on Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared. And that would be 2 times pi times the square root. you got to make sure you take the square root of this value, and you multiply those, and you get that the period of that pendulum would be 1.74 seconds. Okay, so there you go. That was a pretty thorough investigation and demonstration of the factors that affect the period of a pendulum. Remember, it's just the length of the pendulum and the gravitational attraction. It's not the mass and it's not the displacement. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things again. Please subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You can share you can like, and please leave me a comment. And thank you very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.